Great. Today, uh, welcome class. Today, here's what we're gonna do. This is our basically our last uh, new thing. Uh, can we start? This is our last new thing that we're gonna learn. And um, the comic sections are really great and stuff. By the way. I probably haven't even talked about this, but one of the biggest reasons for studying conic sections is uh, orbits. Yeah, that's right. Uh, orbits. You heard, you know, probably because like you know, common knowledge plus like middle school plus like maybe you really learned it that the planets move around the uh, sun in elliptical orbits. Um, that are nearly circles. I think the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit around the sun is like 0.05 or maybe even 0.005. It's like very, very, very close to a circle. Can you guys like nod if you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so it is an ellipse, but it's like almost a circle. So almost a circle is it that the um, two foci of the ellipse, uh, they're so close together that one of them is in the center of the sun, um, as are all the elliptical paths around the sun, and the other focus is like still inside the sun. So like the distance between the, the foci uh, are like smaller than the radius of the sun. That's, um, all of these things can be fact checked later because I'm only slightly sure that they're all right. Um, then you have some things which move around the sun in very elliptical orbits like... I'm not sure if Pluto is actually all that elliptical. I think it's just like big. It is quite elliptical, but like still not so crazy. But yeah, comets, right? Like so, the co the periodic comets uh, are going around the Earth with um, uh, quite elliptical orbits, right? And uh, so, like Halley's comet, for example, that was a big thing when I was a kid in the '80s. The Halley, there was going to be a Halley's comet, which comes like once every like 87 years or something like that. And uh, only once every 87 years does it come close enough to the Earth that you can see it spends most of its orbit like very, very far from the sun. All right. Um, what, however, uh, and, I, and I think, again, I don't really know all the physics that's required um, well enough to really talk about this intelligently. So it's a good thing I'm talking to the whole internet now on this topic. But um, because I, I guess it's just like a, it's just a, um, a feature of gravity, of the universal law of gravitation, that it is like fundamentally quadratic thus leading to like these quadratic relationships. But every path around the sun is going to be one of the comets. So in theory, you could have a perfectly circular orbit, uh, or you could have an elliptical orbit, which all the planets are, of various eccentricities, or you could have a, a, a hyperbolic orbit. So if this is the sun, uh, it is possible, so I say, I use the word orbit kind of in quotes, but if you shot something at the sun from some other solar system, very, very quickly, at a speed that's like extremely quick, then it's, if the speed is fast enough, again, someone correct me if you like know more than I do about this topic, but like the sun does not have enough gravity to capture it, and it just, and it just back out again, and you get like a hyperbola. This just happened like maybe like a month ago in the news, yeah. it was like a big thing, right? Can someone back me up on this? There was some sort of object that, that, that uh, astronomers detected, which was basically moving through the solar system that they had never seen before, and then it was just gone, and that was it. And it was moving on a hyperbola. What's up? I think it's well, it's still somewhere, but it's getting farther away now, I think. All right, um, and you could have someone comment, someone say something intelligent about a parabolic orbit. What's up? If the speed is equal to the yeah, it's sort of like unlikely, right? Do you, Simon? I think Simon gets it. A parabola is almost like like a it's like a it's a, it's like a, something that's almost never going to happen, right? Because for in order for an orbit to make a parabolic in order for an object to make a parabolic orbit around the sun, it would have to be like ex going at exactly the right speed, so that such that it's fast enough that the sun can capture it into an ellipse, but it's um, not a hyperbola either, right? So it's, it's sort of this was a long-winded and probably totally unnecessary introduction to the last thing we're going to do, which is the conic sections in polar form. And as far as I know, the one time that you really use this is when you're studying orbits. It's actually like important. Okay. Um, you guys have probably not done anything with polar equations in, say, I don't know, six months? Yeah. So let's do a crash course about everything you possibly need to know uh, in uh, polar. And uh, it's like, can I get a red marker? Um, so, ready? Uh, here is everything you need to know. Here's everything you need 
to know in polar coordinates? Well, unlike the rectangular coordinate system in which you label a point x comma y uh, based on how far you go over and how far you go up, in a polar coordinate system, it does not work that way. In a polar coordinate system, you have a pole and you have a polar axis. So this is just a bit of vocab in case you forgot this. This thing is called the pole. This thing is called the polar axis. And in polar coordinates, so the polar axis kind of tells you like what theta equals zero is. And now, if you pick an, uh, a point in the plane, in polar coordinates, we label that point r comma theta. And what is the significance of the r and the theta? Yeah. The r is the distance from the pole to the axis. Yeah, exactly. r is the distance the point r comma theta is from the pole, and theta is the counterclockwise angle of rotation from the polar axis to the ray through the pole and the given point. Cool? All this is like review. All right. Um, one often simultaneously wishes to uh, refer to a shape in polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates to convert between them. So overlaid on a particular polar coordinate system, we might also have a rectangular coordinate system. And it is customary when doing this to put the origin of that rectangular coordinate system at the pole and to place the positive x-axis onto the polar axis. If you do that, then you may simultaneously refer to that same point in rectangular coordinates or Cartesian coordinates. And if I'm calling this point r comma theta, but I'm also calling it x comma y, then that suggests immediately some relationship between x, r, y, and theta. What are some? Because that's like how the Cartesian coordinates system work. Does that make it a little bit easy on you? Okay, so what's one fact? X squared plus Y squared equals I squared, true, true. More facts. X equals R cosine theta, because yeah, cosine theta is just X over R. Um, y equals R sine theta, and finally, Yeah, you can say 10 theta. 10 theta is a lot of rex. Okay, so these four equations essentially allow me to convert back and forth between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates, assuming I've placed my um, uh, origin of the pole. All right, um, good. Uh, that's maybe all we need to know to get started. Um, what I want to do is conic sections in polar coordinates. So, um, well, here we go. I will draw the uh, this. When people do this, they're trying to tell you, yo, that's the pole, that's the polar axis. Uh, and now I'm going to, so, oh, this is my focus. So um, it is useful to place the focus of your conic uh, at the pole. And the directrix can be anywhere. So for starters, let's put the directrix to the left of the pole. And I always use the same letter P. Uh, P is the distance uh, between the focus and directors. Focus and directors. Okay. Uh, well, uh, if P, if I use P to refer to the distance between the focus and directors, then what is the equation of this directrix? Since I've drawn it like here. Yeah, it's like x equals negative P. Cool. It's down some point this table. Okay, good. All right. So, yo. Wait. So that's. That, that. Okay, good. So what does the conic look like? Well, the thing we learned um, the other class is that all the conics are like the same, man. All that matters is like the eccentricity. So if I will now draw a kind of a generic conic, see how I have drawn it in such a way that it could be an ellipse, it could be a parabola, it could be a hyperbola, it's like sloppy enough that it could be any of them. All right, uh, well, uh, go. Find me the equation of this conic in polar coordinates. It has eccentricity E, its focus is at the pole, its directrix is P units to the left. Do it. Hint, 
Now, what is the first thing that one does when one seeks to find the equation of a geometric object? Pick an arbitrary point. Wow. Yeah, but I don't want to call that arbitrary point x comma y, do I? Because we're doing it all on polar coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we assume our focus is Yes, I said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're always going to do that. Yeah, so we choose arbitrary point, r comma theta, on the conic. And if you can tell me what's true about that arbitrarily chosen point, then you will have told me essentially what's true about every point on the conic. Yeah? So what is true about that arbitrarily chosen point? It is R away from the focus. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't think so. So distance to focus over distance to directrix is E, the eccentricity. That's like the new definition of the conics that we're using here. All right, so what is that distance? be a little bit careful. It's not hard, but I have to put some effort into it. What is that distance? Good. Tell your table. Yeah, so this is like, it helps maybe if you draw a little dotted line up here. What's this distance? P. Yeah, that distance is P, because the directrix is P away from the focus. And what is this little distance here? Yeah, well, it's like the same as whatever that is. Well, the fact that this is the point R comma theta this is coming together means that that is theta. But if that's theta, then this little piece here is R cosine theta. Yeah, so that's R cosine theta. Cool, cool. All right, so what has to be true about this? Uh, conic C. distance to the distance from the point to the focus, which is R, over the distance from the point to the directrix, which is P plus R cosine theta, is E the eccentricity. And that's basically fine, except we don't usually do it like that, right? We usually write it as R equals. So can you do a little bit of algebra one and get it in the form R equals? Yeah. It helps if you make your point more like exaggerated to be like out, I think. It makes your triangle a little bit bigger and easier to read. Yeah. 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 Cool. So wait, this is just like a one minute ask one problem. Can you tell me when you're done? Solve for R? Not one step, one minute. is the equation of a conic and polar. If I say I think four things need to be true for this to be the correct equation. What's one thing governing this being the correct equation for the conic? Yeah. Uh, x equals r cosine theta. 
Uh, well, okay, 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 that's kind of like built into facts about polar. But this is the correct equation. Tell me four facts about the conic such that this is the right equation for it. Um, focus, focus is at the pole. Directrix is P away. Directrix is P away uh, from the focus. Opens right. Uh, opens right, or perhaps an even better way to say it is, someone was just saying it, Hirsch. Uh, the directrix is to the left. Yep, directrix is uh, to the left of the focus. And finally, the eccentricity is E. All right, so if the eccentricity is E, if the directrix is uh, P units away, specifically P units to the left, and the focus is at the pole, then this is the equation uh, of the conic. Cool? Okay, let's do another one. Uh, now, let's start with the, um, uh, yeah, uh, focus, uh, not focus, uh, pole, polar axis. Let's put the focus at the pole, so this is the focus. And let's place the directrix p units to the right. So now this is x equals p. OK, go. To refer to the distance to the focus of directrix. Yo. Uh, does the conic go to the right still or to the left? You tell me. That's the focus and that's the directrix. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. Yeah, so again, the conic is going to kind of come in like so. Logic is very similar. <laughs> Again, you're going to choose an arbitrary point. Do it before I do it. If you wait, then you're not going to do it. Yeah. 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 So a little bit of a bump. That's R comma theta. So that's R. That's a little bit of that. Makes that R. It makes that theta. So what is the distance to the focus is R, and the distance to the directrix is P minus R cosine theta. Yep. So that's P and that's R cosine theta. Yep, so you get R over P uh, minus R cosine theta equals E. Is that what you guys all got? Yeah. Okay, and then like a minute of algebra one later, and you get um, the formula, which is, you get R, R equals E P over one plus E cosine theta. Someone back me up. Yeah. Good. And that's true if focus at the pole, eccentricity is E, uh, directrix is P and it's the left. Okay, let's do the last one. Um, now here's my, let's see, which one should I do? Uh, la, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter. Here's my uh, pole, polar axis. Let's let the directrix be P units above. Go. You need to draw the kind. Yeah. I don't need to do anything. I know the slippery. Yeah.
Yeah, you could probably make a good guess, I guess, and have the right answer, but we should do it one minute. The whole derivation only takes like really two minutes. So it's going to kind of come in like this or so. So what you get is the distance from the focus to directrix. E, e minus r sine theta. Yep. So yeah, four formulas. Personally, I have trouble like remembering them with 100% accuracy, so I just like redrive them on the spot because once I know the gist, it just takes like a minute each. So there's, so that's that. All right, um, good. That's like the most basic introduction to the topic. Shall we pursue more depth? Oh yeah, have I been like rotating that? I totally haven't been, right? No, I did. Oh, you did? As yeah. I was going? Yeah. Well, that's pretty great. Okay. Um, good. New problem. This is gets pretty exciting. Uh, I shall now give you a uh, equation in polar coordinates, and we're going to figure out every possible thing there is to know about this thing. Yeah. So 12 over 3 minus 5 yeah, cosine minutes, but... theta. All right, talk to me. Uh, it faces right. Yeah, okay, so it just says basic pattern matching. Like, yo, know, this kind of looks like the standard equation for a conic and polar form with the focus of the pole, but not quite because that's a 3 and it needs to be a 1. So let's like divide the top and bottom by 3, like just straight away. Yeah, let's do that. So we get 4 over 1 minus 5 thirds cosine theta. Now this is looking pretty good. Can, yo. I did something called dividing the top and bottom by three. If you would like to think of it. Let's divide the whole thing by three. Literally, like any ordered pair satisfying this equation will also satisfy this equation. Does that make it look like the same? It's like multiple sets of line by five or something. It's just still the same line. All right. Oh, uh, what now? Max. What's a fact? Uh, it's a, the eccentricity is five thirds. Yeah, that's true. The eccentricity is five thirds. So what kind of a thing is this? A uh, hyperbola. That is also true. Whoa, Ethan's on fire. More, what else? Okay. Uh, base is right. E P equals four. It opens right. How do you know? Because it's like right on the board? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good. Um, it, yeah, if you, because we just did this literally like minutes ago, I also know it opens right. Like I'm looking at the, the facts of it. Yo. Uh, P equals 2.4. 2.4, love those decimals. Yes, um, what we know is that EP must be 4, so if EP is 4, then like, um, uh, E is 5 thirds, so like 5 thirds P is 4, and therefore P is 12 fifths. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right, so I have just, with, with relatively little cognitive effort, I have just learned a lot of things about this conic. What I've learned is that um, it looks kind of like this. Here's my pole, here's my polar axis. Where is my, in fact, I don't like to say opens right. What I really want to say about it is um, where the directrix is. Where is the directrix, to the left or to the right of the pole? Uh, yeah, good, that's kind of like more, more of my relevant information. Um, directrix to the left of the pole. All right, so here's my pole, there's one focus. I know it's a hyperbola. I know that P is 12 fifths. So now I'm going to kind of go like 1, 
two, three, 12 fifths, which I've heard a rumor that that's 2.4, is over here. So this is one of my directrices, and it's going to be a hyperbola, right? So like, very, very loosely speaking, what is this hyperbola going to look like? Well, one branch is going to kind of come in like, um, like so, ish, right? And where is the other branch going to be? On the far, far side. Yeah, on like the far, side. far, far side, he says, yeah, because like, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but like somewhere-ish like that or so. Uh, and it's not going to be like centered, right? Because there's going to be another like directrix here or something. And the center, I don't know where the center is. All right, so I, I, there's like a lot of things I don't know. I don't know really anything, right? I don't know where the center is. I don't know what A is. I don't know what B is. I don't know what C is. I don't know anything. All I know is the eccentricity, P, all right, good. Uh, figure out the equation of this conic. Go. Many, many, many interesting ways to do this. Okay. A equals five. A equals Three is equals four. Okay, E equals five there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, so I want, I sort of want to know everything. So among the things I want to know is the equation in, in, in rectangular form. Yeah. But um, you can get that equation in rectangular form many different ways. Um, there are basically two big, well, I don't want to say too much. Yeah, find everything. Uh, I could uh, just try. Can you just like say these? Yeah. Leave it yourself. Just leave it yourself. How are you going to say that the center goes though? Okay. Wait, no, because if you don't know, oh, it's like your iPhone. Right? Right? No, yeah. Because this is your iPhone. It's like 1.25 polar. Um, arcosine theta equals. We can figure out. Okay. Wait, what? How do you know the word? Yeah, exactly. No, it. Hold on, I can't hear. Oh, right. Wait, when he collects the Oh, wait. No, no, no. Uh, A over D is the eccentricity, right? Alright, so in the interest of time, um, I'm going to just basically say that there are two good ways to do this. No, there's like actually like four ways. Um, one is kind of um, annoying and tedious and sort of boring, but very straightforward. And there's another way which is like, awesome and interesting and gets involved in all the various like relationships and stuff like that. So let's try to do both really quick before the bell rings. Um, uh, Arthi figured out like what's like the most chill way to just kind of like do this and just get it done? Oh, okay. So she says r equals 12 over 3 minus 5 cosine theta. And she wants to like multiply both sides by 3 minus 5 cosine theta. Um, so that gives you 3r minus 5r cosine theta equals 12. Oh, what is she doing? In words. Oh, oh, oh. 
Yeah, she's just converting the entire equa equation algebraically, sort of mindlessly, like just converting it from polar to rectangular. This is like a, do you remember doing this with Giles last year? No, not It's like a thing that you did for like one day, where you converted equations from polar to rectangular using the polar conversion formulas. Oh, okay, this will certainly just like work, right? Should we do this really quick? Everyone do this right now. Finish converting. Please excuse this interruption. Tomorrow we will have a score back homeroom. Teachers, um, at this time, okay, ignore this. It's Just keep going. Just going. Matt, 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 Matt. In the event that we have a delayed opening tomorrow, there will be a different schedule um, for that homeroom. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Never mind. Never mind. Nothing could be less important in the entire world. All right. Um, keep going. Keep going. Why is this? Does everyone see how this is going to work out? What should we do now? But there's like only one good idea right now. Square both sides, or yeah, or same thing. Square both sides, right? Because if you square both sides, then you get three r squared equals uh, twenty-five x. Nine r squared. Yeah. Woo. Good. Best video ever. Going in the garbage, I think. One twenty x plus one forty-four. Oh, it's looking a little gross, but. Yeah, r squared is just like x squared plus y squared, yeah? Yes. All right, so this is sort of like not particularly um, like illuminating. Like I don't feel like I'm really learning anything by doing this, but it's certainly going to work. Yeah, and now you have to like put in a couple more minutes in and get that looking good, complete the square, like, you know, get some ugly fractions a little bit, don't be, don't be, don't, don't cry, and then... Yeah, and then, oh yeah, so you're doing it the cool way. We're going to get to that in a minute, hopefully. It's really cool. It's simpler. It's even more than that. Where the magnet you need to be so what is it? Yes. Why are you guys talking over there? Yeah, yeah why are you guys talking over there? Matthew, stop mumbling to yourself. Also, don't stop using your calculator for like third grade fraction math. You can do it, man. Oh. What's up? 16 times a lot is 120. What's 120 over 16? It's a fraction. Like, yeah, it is a fraction, yeah. It's like it's like 30 over 4. It's like 15 over 2. Oh. All right. Yeah. This is kind of a what? Kind of bad? It's not the greatest. Um, then what number goes here? Yeah, you have to like divide that in half first, so it's like 15 fourths, so it's like 225 over 16. Mm -hmm. So what did I just do? I just, basically I just add.